God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Now, if we have come to understand this, when he said, and I have planted you, I have put you in position that you may go and bring forth fruit, you will notice that every time they have talked about fruit, 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 fruit in chapter 15, I want all of you to help me check so that it will not be me making a mistake. I want you to go and check. All of you, please, help me check. In verse 2, was the fruit plural? Check for me, please. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, fruit. English people, are they here? Fruit. I wonder why they did not put S. He purchased it that it may bring forth more, more what? Fruit. You go to chapter verse 4. What did they say? Abide in me and I in you, that the, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. Verse 5, please. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much. Uh -uh. Did you follow all of this? Oh my God. Are you guys with me at all? Go to verse 8. Yearly is my father glorified that ye bear what? Much fruit. In verse 16, what did he say? That ye should go and bring forth what? Fruit. And that your fruit to do what? Remain. And in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, he said, The fruit of the Spirit is... Are you hearing me? So my question is this. Did you notice that God is not expecting two kind of fruits? <laughs> it's not fruits. If you are talking of fruits, are you hearing me? You are now talking about different, different kinds of what? Fruits. But, mm -mm, mm -mm. excuse me, brother. Your fruit, the one that will come out of your life, cannot be another kind. If your own life is producing another kind and it's not Jesus, it is unacceptable. We can have more fruit. We can have much more fruit. We can have abounding fruit. But they are just one kind of fruit. No matter where you are located, no matter how you are planted, no matter how you are watered, when the fruit comes out, it will be one. What is that fruit, please? Jesus. 
Christ's life. Christ. 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 So, that's the first issue we want to settle with God this morning. We don't want to go out of this meeting with an ambiguous statement. If we go anywhere and they say, disciples have multiplied, what are we saying? Aha. That's interesting. That was what happened in the Acts of Apostles. That was what took place in the Acts of the Apostles. That's what we must need them before God because, listen, we cannot do another work that is producing another kind of thing contrary to what God is looking for in this end time. We cannot be doing a work that is producing vagabonds, rascals, eh? rogues. We have not been called to grow any other fruit. If it is not Christ and Christ's life, this work is a waste. In fact, God will not look at it twice. God will say, I'm sorry. This is not what I sent you to produce. So we are coming back to renew what is our commission. What are we going to produce? What is God commissioning us and releasing the comforter to come and produce in our lives. What is it? Christ. So when you are going from this meeting from tonight, what are you to go and produce? Christ life. Even when you go through persecution and they are slashing you like this, what should be coming out of you? Christ. It doesn't matter. Wherever you plant mango tree, are you hearing me? If you carry mango tree to Maduguri and it happens to survive, are you hearing me? If it doesn't survive, that's a different matter. But if it ever survives and it grew, what will it produce? If it survives in Cameroon, what will it produce? If you carry it to the desert of Lake Chad, what will it produce? If it is not Christ, nothing. Nothing. If it is not Christ, then there's nothing. And as we are sitting before God today, the reason why He has engrafted you, the reason why He's taking you out of that useless, wide olive life that you were living. And I must tell you, some of you have repented in this meeting by the grace of God. It will, it will be clear to you that God actually took you out of that hopeless way of life just for one matter. That it might grow in you. What does he want to grow in you? Christ. In fact, when you get back to your home, maybe during the holidays, or people that didn't know that you have been engrafted into a new life. When they came and tried to scratch you like this, expecting that wide olive man that used to break out with anger. When they scratch, they say, let's test him. Let's just test him. Sometimes, you know, they came and provoke you. 
when they provoke you you know before anybody that does that he saw the redness of your eyes because it's that olive old white plant that is flowing through your life but now you have been engrafted onto another life there's a different sap flowing through your veins now may christ flow through you in the name of jesus christ may he be christ in you 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 so that even when somebody came to provoke you what can he provoke christ because the the sap that is flowing through you now is christ The old has died. The old has passed. Behold, all things have become new. And what have I said? Whether it is in Portacot or it is in Australia, because some of you are sitting here now, and maybe the next place where I will meet you will be when God has sent you to China or sent you to Australia. And they say, oh, there's, they say, there's one man here. There's one man here. He finished from Unica. And he is doing his master's here in the university in Australia. But among all the Nigerians that we have been having, is different as if he is not a Nigerian. Hallelujah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he a Nigerian? What happened to the Nigerian inside of him that was cut off? That was that wide olive plant, Mr. Flesh. They say, whatever we did to him, even when we teased him, we saw a different thing coming out of him. The love sap, the life sap that is flowing through him is different. It's not Nigerian. It looks like as if he's a man from heaven. I say, who is that? They say, maybe he's one of your brothers. Then I'll come across and say, ah, what is that? He says, sir, you forgot during the meeting in the University of Calabar, Esad. That was when I was cut off from my old native plant and from that time forward the things I used to do I do them no more the things I used to do I do them no more the things I used to do yeah I do them no more there's a great change since I made the Lord Great change since I'm born again. That's a great oh since that's a great change since I met the Lord. That's a great change. Everywhere. I'm expecting that even your father whom you grew with for 20 something years will be surprised say so this is not the boy I gave back to this kind that is turning out here is a different species entirely it doesn't resemble me again the life that flows that produces fruit is Christ the fruit it produces is Christ the seed inside the fruit of your life will be who? will be Christ and when you offer that fruit to anybody what do you offer? Christ Christ 
you will multiply your own kind in the name of Jesus Christ so I saw Jesus laying this as a very critical matter upon these disciples I was beginning to note that could it be that some of us we didn't get our commission properly could it mean that we misunderstand or we misread the word of God and we went about producing any kind of thing we like preaching all kind of sermons Raising all kind of different, 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 different seedlings. And so we have produced a church that is everything else but Christ. We have now produced organizations that is ambitious about nothing else is ambitious about everything but not Christ. And we are eager to gather people and we call that growth. Sometimes we call it church growth. And when Jesus comes around and says, huh, what are you growing here? What are you growing here? These are wide, wide plants. I don't know you. So I say, but in your name, he said, in my name. And you did this kind of thing. I never knew you. Actually, you are a worker for someone else. And what is his name? Mr. Iniquity. Please depart from you and with everything you carry. I'm afraid that on that day, when Jesus will send his, his reapers, all the weeds, all the tears that have been sown into the field, into the vineyard, they will pack them out first. And those that are the sons of the kingdom will be harvested unto eternity. What are we mandated to go and grow from this meeting? Christ! Christ! Now, can I ask one more question before I move on? Because I need to quickly move on so that I can find a space where we will stop for this morning. If you want to grow mango, what do you plant? Eh? It's mango seed. It is impossible for any man to gather grape from a plant that is called bamboo bush. Is it possible? So Jesus actually told these brothers earlier in, in Luke chapter 6, he said, of a thorn bush nobody can gather grape and of of bamboo bush nobody can get figs it is what a man sows that he will reap so if we are planning to be fruitful with this fruit that God is the vine dresser about. What are we going to be planting? Eh? It has to be Christ. It has to be Christ. It has to be Christ. And that for me is opening a new chapter for us to discuss. 
No wonder a man like Paul, who knew what God told him to go and grow, he said, We preach Christ. Eh? Eh? Let's go and read it. Let's read it. Keep your hand on, on John because we are coming back on it. Colossians, please. Colossians, are you in Colossians? Chapter 1. Colossians, chapter 1. Maybe 26. Just start from 26. Colossians 1, 26. Then you read on. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, mm. to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery yes. among the Gentiles. Among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Uh -huh. Whom we preach. Wait. Many of you, you preach topics. Abi? But what are they preaching? They are preaching a person. They preach Christ. Whom? 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 You see, let me tell you. We cannot grow Christ if what we are planting is a different seed. That's part of what must happen from here. Hallelujah. Amen. Whom we preach. Yes, ma'am. Whom we preach, uh -huh. warning every man and teaching every man in uh -huh. all wisdom. Yes. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Whereunto I also labor. Yes. Striving according to his working. Mm -hmm. Which worketh in me mightily. Thank you. Where is good news? Is there a good news in this auditorium today? Is there a message? This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past. Uh -huh. But now it has been revealed to his own holy people. Uh -huh. For it has pleased God to tell his people that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. For this is the secret. Christ lives in you. Christ lives in you. Uh -huh. And this is your assurance that you will share in his glory. That's the only assurance. Oh. That's the only assurance that you will be part of the glory oh. If Christ is not in you, you are not part of him. If it is not Christ's light that is flowing into you, if it is not Christ that is living in you, if it is not Christ that is manifesting in you, if it is not Christ that is growing in you, if it is not Christ, if anybody gave you assurance they are deceiving you, the only assurance that you'll be part of the glory, that you'll be part of that glorious kingdom, is that the life you also carry is not different from the one I carry. And it's not different from the one Paul carried. You remember Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I but who Christ who lives in me so every wait sir wait sir if it is not Christ's life that is living in you because you have been grafted onto that vine from your old native life 
and it is no more the old native light that is running through your veins now because that has been cut off. If it is Christ's life, then you have an assurance. If it is not Christ's life passing through you, even the fruit of your life will prove it. It will show. You know, sometimes you think that this particular plant, because it is in between, you know, there are times, I don't know whether you know, sometimes you plant maize, and then there is something that looks like maize that is inside. Am I right? When it is time, when they are bearing fruit, what will happen? Talk to me, what will happen? You will just discover, ah, what kind of thing is this one producing? They say it's producing what he carries. Leaves may look alike. Are you hearing me? Leaves may look alike. Even flower may look alike. But by their fruit, you will know them. Yes, sir. So everywhere we go, uh -huh. we tell everyone about Christ. Everywhere we go. Did you see the way this brain were planting things? Everywhere we go, we tell everyone we meet about Christ. Yes, sir. We want them and teach them with all the wisdom God has given us. Uh -huh. For we want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. You see that? When you go and you say you are doing discipleship and you are teaching how to wear dress. And some of you are saying somebody resurrected when he died and said you should not wear your ring. Is that the message? Is that what God is looking for in heaven? No, sir. What is he looking for? Christ. Christ. Christ in you. The hope of glory. When you go somewhere and you gather people and telling them 21 steps unto powerful fasting. See, in our own discipleship, we just started so 21 step onto powerful fasting. Is that Christ? No. Make sure that what you are producing is not going to be burned by fire. It is what you are looking to produce that you plant. What are we planning to produce? Christ. What must we plant? Christ. What must we preach? Christ. What must we carry? Christ. What must we water? Christ. What must we fertilize? Christ. What must we present for rain? Christ. Christ in you the hope of glory. Finish up so that the man with message will read for us. I work very hard at this. I'm working very hard at this. As I depend on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Amen. Give us message. Thank you, brother. This mystery has been kept in the dark for a long time for a long time but now it's out in this open God wanted everyone not just Jews to know this rich and glorious secret inside and out regardless 
of their background regardless of your background regardless of their, their religious religion. standing yes sir the ministry in a nutshell is just this listen in a nutshell without talking 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 we can reduce this whole thing into a nutshell the mystery in a nutshell is just this what is it christ is in you uh -huh. so therefore you can look forward to sharing in god's glory yes sir it's that simple it's that simple that is wait the... wait 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 it's simple there's no complication about this thing no listen to me there's no complication about it there's no need of wearing cap and putting a, a tie and uh, shaking your body and coming like a masquerade oh, there's nothing about it oh. it is simple anybody can understand it Christ in you the hope of glory that simple sometimes the simplicity of this mystery makes many of us to ignore it some of you are saying is that what we are going to go everywhere preaching when are we going to preach the doctrines of demons are you planning to grow demons I'm asking you now, tell me. Let me tell you, it's because you don't know. If we start here now to teach demonology, and we teach it morning, afternoon, night, and every week we are teaching it, do you know the congregation we are going to produce? <laughs> do you know that we are going to have demons here? Because that's what you are growing. Some of you, you are going to programs on Wednesday, demons. Saturday, demons. Friday, demons. Sunday morning, they say there is there's a class of witches that you need to learn about. Do you know that after you have planted demons, 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 when they will begin to germinate, what will they produce? So I see so many brothers who are supposed to resemble Christ. They actually resemble a demon. When they are coming like this, they do their yes. When they see a brother, you want to greet them. You just want to greet him and say, ah, brother, let's all I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Bind you in the name of Jesus. You don't know what has happened. This brother <laughs> he is beginning to produce what has been planted in him for years. Can you imagine how many of you cannot hug brethren again? Because every day they have told you that if you hug them, your egg, your egg, that is to be the seed of your, of your destiny, they will suck it. So when you see brethren, they say, ah, sister, brethren, do you know that that's what you are producing you are producing demonic demonized fearful human beings who are wicked they are wicked even their prayer is the prayer of wickedness say yes Anybody that says my promotion will not come this month, we fry him, we roast him, we finish him, we counsel him, we nullify him in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. <laughs> you see that? Did you notice that we have produced wicked people? 
we have produced callous people. What is your promotion? How much did we they add to your promotion that you are willing to nullify an eternal soul forever? This kind of brother you call them, they are not going to have oh, oh. the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, not hate. If you want to grow this life of Christ, what must we plant? What must we preach? What must we water? Go ahead. Let's finish it because I want you to hear it before we pray. Yes. That is the substance of our message. That is the substance of our message. What's the substance of our message? Christ. May I tell you, even though we are talking about discipleship, 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 discipleship is not our message, though. What is our message? Discipleship is only a means of forming Christ in men. So if I, when I hear say, yes, we are disciple, 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 and I don't see Christ, I say, no, 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 this is not what God sent us to go and plan to. If you stand and you preach discipleship and you didn't preach Christ, you miss the point. Hey, somebody say, hey. That is it. Oh. The essence and the substance of our message is this. What is the substance? Christ. Christ. What is the essence of our message? Christ. Christ. And what is the goal of our message? Christ. What is the result of our message? Christ. What is the expectation of our message? Right. What are we expecting to reap? Right. Now, finish. Finish it. We preach Christ. We preach Christ. Warning people uh -huh. not to add to the message. What are we doing? We are warning you not to add. Don't add to the message, oh. Any addition will be impurity. <clears throat> Any addition will be a, 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 a confusion of the seed that we are looking for. We preach Christ. We warn men not to add to the message. Yes. We teach in a spirit of profound common sense. Listen. Because this thing is simple. And we want everybody everywhere, regardless of their religious standing, regardless of their social position, regardless of their educational uh, exposure, regardless of their tribal leaning, regardless of their location, to come to know this inside out. We teach in the spirit of profound common sense. Don't make it complicated. Don't come around and say, uh, we have been in discipleship for 30 years. And uh, there are certain mysteries that you don't get to know unless you have traveled with us in the path of discipleship. There is discipleship, there is discipleship. <laughs> what is happening to that man now is getting complicated. Even me, I don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry about what you are talking about. I'm not sure about it. If you are a disciple, there's only one mark that we will see. What shall we see? Christ. Simple. We want every man not to add to the message. Yes, sir. We teach in the spirit of profound common sense so that 
we can bring each person to maturity. Uh -huh. To be mature and to be matured is to be basic. Is to be basic. Christ. Christ. No more. No less. No less. When you are matured, you will become basic. Christ. No more. No less. If I'm looking at people here, they say, oh, they are in discipleship. Did, 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 did. And they say they are matured. The only means of knowing that they are matured is that they have become basic. Basic. Christ. No more, no less. Let me tell you. It is immaturity when there are other impurities around your life that has obscured Christ. The more matured you become, the more basic your life becomes. And you are basically Christ in action. Christ in practice. Christ in life. If I get more mature than this, are you hearing me? I'll become more and more simple more and more basic more and more loving <laughs> more and more like Christ if I become more matured are you hearing me than I am now are you hearing me I'll become more and more what basic basic they say ah, where is that brother Billy now See, there's nothing, we can't even see anything around him. The only thing we are seeing with him is Christ. That's when I'm matured. But whenever they are talking about me, they say it's a preacher of Christ, and all of that, they say many, many, many things, and there are still too many other issues that they are still saying around me, and it is not Christ. Get to know that I'm still pressing on onto maturity. When this work will be matured, are you hearing me? Will become more simple. Some of us are still complicated yet. Somebody wants to greet you and say, My disciple, my disciple. Go and sit down there. You are complicated. That's a useless complication. We know that you are not growing yet. When you grow more and you become more matured, you become basic. You become more simple. Small children will be able to fall on you and there will be no problem. Sisters will come. They will talk. And you will, you will, there's no anger. But as I'm seeing some of you now, you are still very sophisticated. Because you are not approachable. And you are coming. He said, brother, he is coming. Brother, he is coming. He's coming. So I see everybody doing like this. <laughs> That's not what we are growing. Those are weeds. Weeds that we are trusting God to help us remove. So that you can become more basic. So as we are going from here, Christ, no more, no less. Go ahead. That's what I'm working so hard at. Yes. Day after day. Day after day. Year after year. Year after year. Doing my best with the energy God so graciously gives me. Hallelujah. Are we together? You see, when I came at this, a question that came to my mind is this. This was what Paul, with all his anointing, these brothers, they raised the dead, but they did not regard raising the dead as what they were looking at. God used them to raise the dead, but that's not the issue. 
the issue is Christ. We want to present every man matured in Christ. And to be matured is to be basic. Christ, no more, no less. He said, this is what I am working day after day, year after year after. I said, ah, oh, with all the years of this man in ministry, that's what he is doing. That's what he was doing. All the energy that God gave him, all the anointing on his life, that's what he was doing with it. They were not looking for anything else. They were not planning to become popular. They just want to produce Christ. Christ, Christ, Christ everywhere. As we will be going from this meeting, what is the abounding, abundant fruit that we are looking for? What is the abounding fruitfulness that we are looking for? What is the abundant fruitfulness that we are looking for? Christ. If the discipleship work produces well, it should be producing what? Christ. When we send you to all your churches and you are getting there, what should they be seeing there? And what kind of people should you be producing in those congregations? Christ. That's the will of God for us. How can that be? Jesus now said, Abide in me. Stay connected to me. I want us to read that together. Chapter 15. You will read verse 4 for us. The Amplified Bible Reader. Dwell in me. Dwell in me. And I will dwell in you.